The last week has been crazy with the big distro releases, mainly because of Ubuntu, the new LTS version of Ubuntu being released, 18.04, and the various official flavors of 18.04 that were also released, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Mate, Budgie, and all that. Hot on the heels of all those Ubuntu 18.04 releases, just yesterday, Fedora 28 was released. I've already taken a look at Fedora 28 in beta form about three or four weeks ago on the channel. Today I'm going to take it, a look at the official release, Fedora 28 Workstation. We're going to do an install and review inside of a virtual machine, so let's take a look. Fedora 28. Uh, this is a really, really interesting release of Fedora because I've got to be honest, this is the very first release of Fedora that I remember, and I've been using Linux for about 10 years now on the desktop. I think this is the first version of Fedora where they set a release date and they actually met that release date. Uh, Fedora is notorious. It's almost a running joke about Fedora and their release dates, how they never release on time. They always get pushed back. Sometimes multiple times they get pushed back. So uh, the fact that they set this release date for May 1st and actually kept it is uh, is really cool. This is a first, actually, I think, in uh, Fedora's history. So this is Fedora 28, taking a look at the uh, release announcement here. Uh, hey everyone, it's May right around Mother's Day in many countries, and that means it's time for the next Fedora operating system release, yada yada yada. They've released Fedora 28 Workstation, Fedora 28 Server, Fedora 28 Atomic Host. Atomic Host includes the click to launch links for Amazon EC2 and all that cloud stuff. I'm not going to take a look at Atomic. I'm not going to take a look at uh, Fedora Server either. I'm taking a look at Fedora 28 Workstation, the GNOME edition today. If you're already using Fedora, you can upgrade from the command line or use the GNOME software utility for an easy graphical update. So for those of you that are already running Fedora 27, there is an upgrade path. What's new in Fedora 28? Well, a lot of server stuff. I'm not dealing with the server today. Fedora 28 news, uh, workstation news though. It looks like for the first time ever, we're making it easy for users to enable certain third-party software sources, including the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. That's huge news right there. Uh, allowing Fedora users an easy-to-install way of getting those proprietary graphics drivers. Big plus. Always been one of the complaints with Fedora is that getting some of that uh, closed-source proprietary non-free software, not the easiest thing in the world to do on Fedora sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and download the ISO and I'm going to install this in a virtual machine. Okay, so I've downloaded the ISO. The ISO was 1.5, or excuse me, 1.7 gigs in size. Not a terribly large ISO. Not for, you know, a full featured uh, distro featuring the GNOME desktop environment. And we may wait a minute here for the live environment to load up. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for the, the live environments to load on these. I'm booting, of course, directly off the ISO in a VM. Uh, this would be the same for you guys installing on physical hardware as booting off a live USB stick. And we're still waiting. That's kind of hung here for a second. I'm wondering, okay. All right, so we're in the live environment. So I'm going to go ahead and run through the installer. All right, we have our little greeter here. We have the options of try Fedora, which means close the installer and play around in the live environment, or install to our hard drive. That's what I'm going to choose. And it takes a second for the installer to load here. I gave this VM... Uh, I didn't give it a lot of resources. I only gave it one core of my six core CPU. And I gave it four gigs of RAM. My main machine has 16 gigs of RAM. So I gave it four gigs of RAM. GNOME kind of needs a bit of RAM, so I didn't want to go too, too light on the RAM. All right, this is the Anaconda installer, the standard in installer in Fedora. English has already been chosen for our language, so I'm just going to click continue. 
the installer is acting a little sluggish here. Things are taking a little bit of time. I've never liked the Anaconda installer. It seems kind of buggy to me every time I use it. Anyway, keyboard's already been set to English US, so I don't need to change anything. Time and date, America, Chicago. That's the central time zone in, in America. That's fine. I'm actually in the central time zone, so no, no need to change that. All right, installation destination. We, did, we do need to go through this. This is where we do our partitioning or what have you. So it's already chosen the 15 gig hard drive I created in this virtual machine. You see the little check box? I'm just going to go ahead and let's see, automatic partitioning or do some custom partitioning. I'm just going to let it do the automatic. So really all I need to do here is just click done at the top of the page. And when you click done, it, it, it always hangs for a few seconds. It makes you think uh, what's going on. And then when you get to this page, I still have the exclamation sign, like the warning symbol here. It makes you think something didn't go right. But, you know, it takes a few seconds and then all of a sudden that goes away. And you realize you did everything right. It's just this installer is kind of slow. Uh, kind of sluggish. Then we need to go down here and choose begin installation. The Anaconda installer, uh, like I said, it's not my favorite graphical installer. I really like the Calamaris installer that a lot of distros use nowadays. Uh, Ubuntu's Ubiquity installer that all the various flavors of Ubuntu and a lot of the Ubuntu spinoffs use. Ubiquity's really nice. Anaconda, yeah. But it gets the job done. Anyway, it's installing the software. This may take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back once this portion of the installer is completed. All right, and the installer has completed. You see here at the bottom right, Fedora is now successfully installed and ready for you to use. Go ahead and reboot and start using it. So you always have to reboot your machines. Anytime you uh, install an operating system, you always have to reboot. So all you need to do is click the quit button. Your machine should reboot automatically that's what I'm gonna do right now all right and we rebooted our freshly installed Fedora 28 workstation and uh, clicking quit in the installer actually didn't automatically reboot your machine it just quit the installer then you had to go into the good old menu and and reboot uh, the old-fashioned way <laughs> uh, anyway boot up time seems to be going pretty fast here we got to uh, the splash screen and everything pretty quick. And the GNOME Display Manager here. Uh, of course, we're not logging in. We haven't even set a user or a password or anything. So this is still part of the installation. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go through this post-installation script here. We have this program. It's called Welcome. Click Next. Location services. Do we want to turn this on? This allows applications to determine your geolocation. Uh, I guess for things like your web browser and such. It's turned on by default. I'll leave it turned on. Automatic problem reporting. I'll leave that turned on. So bug reporting, I guess. Crash reports. Connect your online accounts. I'm not going to do this in a VM, but you could connect your Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft, Facebook accounts. All right, full name, uh, DT is fine for, for this VM. Username, DT is fine as well. Password, we need to create a strong and complicated password. All right, that works for me. All right, you're ready to go. Start using Fedora. Click the Start Using Fedora button. Okay, and that automatically reboots your machine, I guess. And we wait for this to load up. All right, we got to the login manager very fast. And let's log in. Okay, this is taking a second. All right, and we have loaded up into the GNOME 3 desktop environment. The first thing we get is a uh, little greeter here. It's called Getting Started. I guess the name of the program actually is called GNOME Help. And we have things like Common Task, how to browse the web, connect to our online accounts, which we could have done in that post-installation script we didn't bother doing, uh, get online, change the date, time, time zone, 
uh, system search, launch applications, change the wallpaper, use windows and workspaces, switching tasks. I'm just going to go ahead and close the greeter here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the menu system here and see what applications are installed by default here on Fedora 28 workstation. And it looks like we have GNOME boxes installed by default. This is a hypervisor, basically a virtualization program similar to VirtualBox, VMware, uh, KVM, those sorts of programs. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm recording this Fedora install in VirtualBox, which is a virtualization program. GNOME Boxes is a similar kind of program. And let's see if we figure out what version of GNOME Boxes this is. If I click About here, this is Boxes 3.28.2. Very recent release of GNOME Boxes. This is a uh, GNOME 3.28, by the way, is the version of the GNOME desktop environment that Fedora 28 is shipping with, which is the latest release of GNOME. All right, also under the applications here, we have our calculator, the GNOME calculator. We have Calendar Cheese, which is a webcam program for showing your webcam, similar to how you're seeing me in my webcam right now. Uh, we have a GNOME Clocks. Basically, uh, we have to allow access, grant access, and it shows world clocks from around the world. We can add different uh, various locations and times. It's already used geolocation to figure out that I'm in Monroe, Louisiana in the U.S. here. All right. Back to the applications. We have our contacts. We have GNOME documents. We have Evolution. That is the standard email client in the GNOME desktop environment. Um not one of my favorite GNOME programs actually. I, I think this one is kind of pointless. I think most people would rather use uh, Thunderbird if they were going to use like a desktop email client. So I really don't understand why GNOME even wastes time you know bothering uh, with an email client. I just think that's a t time that could would be better spent on other things. <laughs> uh, Files, that's the Nautilus file manager here. GNOME just simply calls it files these days, but this is the Nautilus file manager. This is files 3.28-1. And it had a stable behind the name too, so I guess they consider that the stable version of Nautilus. I didn't know there was an unstable version of the file manager. That's interesting. I should check into that. Uh, Firefox is our default web browser here in Fedora 28. For Firefox is taking a little bit of time to load but that's normal. Firefox is kind of a heavy program. It's not a lightweight program. Boy, things are moving really really slow in this VM after I opened Firefox. Um, the GNOME desktop environment anyway is not a very lightweight program but man things are really moving slow now that I opened the file manager or the uh, web browser here. Again, I only gave this VM one core of my six core CPU, but I think that should be enough to actually run decently. I gave it four gigs of RAM too, so RAM is, should not be the problem here. This is Firefox Quantum 59.0.2. There's definitely some real sluggishness. I mean, that mouse is moving at a crawl. Uh, things are not wanting to, to work correctly here. I may actually have to pause this review for a second, uh, shut down this VM, and actually go back and give this VM another core of my CPU. You know what, I think I will do that because I don't, I've seen some graphical glitches here in the preview of, of the recording. I'm sure you guys have seen some strange things going on. Let me go back and give the, the VM a little bit more beef. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went back and I gave this VM two cores of my six core CPU and I went ahead and I bumped up the RAM from four gigs to six gigs. So I took a little bit more of the resources away from my main machine, which I'm using to actually record this video. So the video quality may not be as good now, but hopefully the VM works a little better. So gonna, let, me, let me get back to the VM here. All right, I'm gonna go back to the menu system here, show applications. All right, and it looks like we have LibreOffice installed. We have Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer all installed. Now this should be 
the latest LibreOffice. Uh, with Fedora, you typically typically get the latest packages on release date. They're usually pretty bleeding edge. I mean, you're going to get like the latest uh, programs. You're going to get the, like the latest Linux kernel. They're not afraid of shipping, uh, you know, really bleeding edge stuff, sometimes buggy stuff. <laughs> it's not necessarily a stable distro. This isn't Debian. You know, Fedora is a little bit more, again, on the bleeding edge. LibreOffice 6.0.3.2. So yeah, LibreOffice version 6. Very re recent version of LibreOffice. All right, back to the applications. We have the GNOME Map Utility. The GNOME Map uh, program actually is a really neat uh, map program. Let me grant access to the map program. Uh, and this might be one that probably needed a little more uh, CPU and RAM. I can already tell, you know, when I grab that and scroll, you know, webcam starts freezing. Actually, the VM starts messing around a little bit. But anyway, yeah, and the cursor is moving real slow. It's kind of a heavy program here. Probably not a great one to run in a VM. I will say this, though. I mean, uh, I run VMs a lot. Of course, I've, I've done, I don't know, a hundred or more distro reviews on this channel since I started this channel six months ago. This one's running kind of slow. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with it. Maybe a problem with actually my host machine. I just installed Manjaro here less than two weeks ago on my main machine. But I've recorded some other distro reviews. I mean, all those Ubuntu 1804 releases I recorded on this they seem to work fine in a VM, so I'm not sure what's going on with, with a Fedora 28 workstation here. Back to the applications. We have GNOME Photos for a photo manager. We have Rhythmbox. Rhythmbox is the audio player in the GNOME desktop environment. Really nice audio player. Very uh, feature-rich. Rhythmbox 3.4.2. Really one of the best GNOME apps, actually. Uh, Rhythmbox. Like I would, uh, I would use Rhythmbox even if I didn't use the GNOME desktop environment. I mean, it's it's that good of an application. We also have settings. This would be your GNOME settings manager, your control center, if you will. Uh, we may come back to this later, but this would be where you would uh, change all your preferences and settings for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, background notifications, search, region and language, online accounts, privacy, sound, power, network, yada yada yada. All right, we also have Simple Scan, a scanning utility installed by default. We have the GNOME Software Center. And this is your graphical package manager, if you will. Under Categories, you can search for a category like audio, video. You click on this, and then it gives you, you know, a listing of the various audio and video programs available in the repos. For example, I could install... Music players like Quad Libet, I could install the Audacity Audio Editor, Audacious, which is another audio player, Rosero, which is a disc burning utility, etc. If you didn't know the name of the program, then searching by category works uh, really well. Uh, if you don't know the name, if you if you do know the name of the program, you can actually click the search function here and search for. We already know Thunderbird is not installed by default, so Thunderbird. Here, we get it, click on it, click install, and it would start installing. I'm not going to bother installing it on camera. Get rid of the search here. See if I can go back to that main page, because that main page had something interesting on it. Enable third-party software repositories. That accesses additional software from selected third-party sources. This is where you get your proprietary drivers, your proprietary graphics drivers. Uh, probably some multimedia codecs and things like that. Click Enable. All that stuff is now in the repo. It's searchable here in the GNOME Software Center. It's installable here in the GNOME Software Center. Big, big plus. That's one of the things that Fedora was really lacking is that easy, just one click, yeah, give me that proprietary stuff that I know Fedora only ships non-free software by default. But, you know, most of us have to use some non-free software, especially with, like, video cards. You don't buy a really nice AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. You don't go spend $600 on an NVIDIA 1080 and then run the open source Nuvo drivers. You just don't do it. You need the proprietary NVIDIA drivers to get the most out of your system. So, 
I give uh, Fedora a lot of props on that. All right, back to the applications. We have this subcategory here called Sundry. Only one thing is in it. That is problem reporting, I guess crash reports. Helping uh, Fedora, you know, diagnose bugs. We also have our text editor. This is gedit, the standard text editor in the GNOME desktop environment. This is gedit 3.28.1. Your standard plain text editor. You've seen one plain text editor. You've seen them all. The gedit is really nice. It even has options for adding plugins and stuff. I mean, you can really do some advanced stuff with gedit if you if you want want to go that route. All right, we have a utilities subcategory here. Under that, we have our archive manager, which is the GNOME file roller utility. This is for zip, unzip, that sort of thing. We have our characters, we have disk usage analyzer, we have the GNOME disk utility. We have our document viewer. Document viewer would be for viewing things like PDFs. We have fonts, help, image viewer for viewing images of course. We have logs, screenshot which is a screenshot utility for taking screenshots. We have our system monitor. Let's launch the system monitor because I'm kind of curious. We've had some some sluggishness, some issues with the VM. Let's see what kind of resources we're actually using. Now, right now, I've given it two cores of my six-core CPU, and it's using a little bit of both cores. It's using about 12%, 14% of both cores. Uh, that's not great, but that's okay. If I went back to just giving it one core, it would probably be much higher. Memory usage is off the chart, though. I now I'm giving giving this machine six gigs of RAM. It's using 1.5 gigs. Um, that's that's way too high. That's one of the things I just don't like about the GNOME desktop environment. 1.5 gigs, and I'm not doing anything. That's way too much RAM usage. Uh, back to the utilities subcategory here. We also have our terminal. This is the standard G GNOME terminal. This is GNOME Terminal 3.28.1. Really nice terminal emulator. I like the GNOME Terminal. Uh, I don't use it much on my systems because I don't use GNOME, but when I use GNOME, I, I really like the GNOME Terminal. All right. Uh, the last thing. Let me move my head out of the way here so you guys can see videos here. This is the GNOME Video Player. And... The GNOME Weather Utility. That's the only other two programs left to, to show you here in the application. So not a ton of applications installed by default. So get back to the desktop here. I'm going to right click on the desktop. I'm going to choose Change Background. And this is taking a second to load. All right, and we have the options of changing our desktop background and the lock screen background. I'm going to choose, of course, the desktop background here. And for wallpapers, we have no options. We have this first one, which uh, I've seen this wallpaper before. It's kind of hideous looking. It's not attractive, but I'll select it so you guys can see it. Some kind of weird abstract art with some uh, not very attractive colors. Uh, I hit the wrong thing there. Let me cancel that. Let me go back to the backgrounds. I'm just going to go back to the default wallpaper. The default wallpaper actually looks good. Just wish there were more options as far as, you know, some kind of wallpaper pack installed by default. Again, this is Fedora. Fedora ships a plain GNOME desktop. No extensions, no extra themes, icon sets, nothing. You get GNOME as GNOME was intended by the GNOME developers. And for a lot of people, they're going to be kind of off-put by that. I know I am, because I could not use GNOME in this state. I would have to add some extensions. I would have to add better, better theming uh, if I was going to use GNOME. And that's pretty much all I'm going to cover here today with Fedora 28 Workstation, the GNOME edition. Uh, again, I've taken a look at Fedora 28 in beta form about a month ago. I also did another video on Fedora 28, the GNOME edition, where I showed you how to basically turn this very plain vanilla GNOME Fedora desktop experience into something a little more usable. I did a video a while back uh, on six extensions that I like to install in GNOME that I think make it a lot more usable. 
um, it really turns this very plain, very not user friendly, in my opinion, GNOME desktop into something really nice, really easy to use, and far more attractive. So I'm going to link to both of those videos, my beta review and the uh, six extensions that I installed to make Fedora 28 a little more usable, in my opinion. So I'll link to those in the description. Before I go, I do want to do a special thanks to all my patrons. A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, and Leor. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.